Let's look at selecting a path of insertion for this class 3 partially edentulous arch. The first thing you want to do is take your cast and make sure that you've got it on your cast holder and it's tight and it won't wobble. The next thing you want to do is probably to start with the tilt of your cast relatively horizontal. If it's not horizontal you're going to find that you have some discrepancies. We'd like to e equalize the undercuts that we see between teeth. So when we look at the mesial distal aspects here, we see we've got a large undercut over here. Our height of contour is right at the marginal ridge. If we look at the tooth in front of the edentulous space, we can see that actually the height of contour is right down at the gingival margin. That's not even. So what we're going to do first is to tilt our cast, and we're going to try and get a tilt where we've got a little bit of an undercut on the mesial or the anterior abutment, and a little bit of an undercut on the distal abutment. You can see here we've still got a bit of an undercut that's a bit bigger so we're going to tilt that a little bit more and now you can see we've got an undercut on the anterior abutment. It's not quite as large but we've evened that out. The tilt that we pick is also important from side to side so we want to make sure that our undercuts that we see on perhaps the third quadrant are similar to the ones that we see on the fourth quadrant. We'll also check on the lingual surface. We want to make sure that the undercuts that we see on the lingual surface in the fourth quadrant are similar to the undercuts that we see on the lingual surface of the third quadrant. When we've equalized our undercuts, we want to check for a retentive undercut to place the retentive tip of the, of the retentive clasp of the partial denture. Putting that little flexible piece of metal into an undercut will actually help improve our retention. That's what gives the partial denture its retention as well as some of the other factors. Uh, so what we're going to do is we would normally design the partial denture, decide where we're going to put those undercuts, where we're going to put the tips of our clasps. For the exercise today, we're going to tell you where to look for those undercuts. We're going to look for a 0.01 inch undercut on the distal buckle of this back tooth here. The undercut gauge works like this. This is a 0.01 inch undercut gauge. You'll know your inner gauge is in a 0.01 inch undercut when both the lip is touching the tooth and the side of the shaft is touching the tooth as well. So here you can see we've got a bit of a gap between the shaft and the tooth. So we'll move that down a little bit until we can move that over and we can see both the shaft is touching the tooth and the lip is touching the tooth. Where that lip is touching the tooth, that is exactly a 0.01 inch undercut. We will mark that exact undercut by taking our red pencil, moving it just slightly out of the way, and putting a little mark, a red mark, where our undercut is going to be. That's where we want the undercut on this particular tooth, and we want to make sure that it's not any greater than 0.01 inch undercut. The amount of undercut that you place a retentive clasp into is extremely important. The type of material will depend how far into an undercut you can place it. Cast metal, like this retentive clasp here, you can see that it's cast all as one unit and it's part of the framework. It's made at the same time as the framework. Cast metal is less flexible than wrought wire and it can only be placed into a 0.01 inch undercut. If you place it into a 0.02 inch undercut, it will bend permanently and it will not flex back into the undercut. You'll lose your retention. This clasp over here is wrought wire. You can see if you follow it up, it's bent over here and it actually comes over here and solders someplace onto the framework. Wrought wire is intrinsically more flexible. It's round and it has a different grain structure. Because it flexes more, you can put it into a deeper undercut and we'll put wrought wire into a 0.02 inch undercut to make sure we get as much retention as we can without exceeding that proportional limit of the clasp. Let's finish off surveying this class 3 case. Remember we equalize the undercuts on the proximal surface of the teeth and also on the buccal and lingual surface of the teeth. Now we need to make sure that we can place our undercuts where we want them. Over here I can see that I've got enough room for my 0.01 inch undercut on the mesial buccal of this molar. I'll mark that exactly where the ledge or the lip on my undercut gauge is touching the tooth 
and the shaft is touching the same time. We mark where the lip is with a red dot or a red line. I'll go over to the opposite side and make sure I can get a retentive area for my other clasps. On the distal buckle, I want a clasp going into a 0.01 inch undercut over here and on the mesial surface, mesial buckle surface over here, I want to have again a 0.01 inch undercut. When I've marked my undercuts, I want to make sure they're not right at the gingival margin. They should be at least a millimeter above. If we find that they're too close to the gingival margin, we may have to change our tilt to move the undercut a little higher, or in some cases we may actually have to prepare a little retentive undercut in the tooth itself. Once I've made sure I have the undercuts that I need and that I've evened out the undercuts on the proximal surface and lingual surfaces for my rigid elements of the partial denture, I will take my carbon marker and I will mark the heights of contour. I do that by putting the tip of the carbon marker down at the gin level of the gingiva and I move around the tooth and I don't press too hard but I make sure that the tip of the carbon marker is always at the gingiva. That will mark the height of contour on that tooth. You should do that on all of your abutments. All of the teeth that are going to be touching the partial denture should have those heights of contour marked on them. Be careful not to accidentally bring the tip of the, the carbon marker up too high. Remember the tip should be at the gingiva. If you don't have it at the gingiva, it may actually mark a false height of contour like you see here at the tip. It's not actually at the widest part of the tooth because as I move this down you can see it touches much lower. It only marked higher because I didn't have my carbon tip all the way down to the free gingival margin. So I will mark the heights of contour on my other teeth and again we just make sure that that tip is down at the gingival margin and we go all the way around the, our abutment teeth. I'll do that on the opposite side as well. The last thing that I'm going to do is mark this cast so that if I take it off the cast holder, I can reorient it at the same path of insertion that I've just picked. What I want to do is make sure that this is tight as it can be so it, they can't tilt while I'm doing the marking. I want to make sure that I can place three widely separated marks with my carbon marker on my cast. I want this one down a little bit lower, so I'll move it here. I'll make a little line. The line should be about five millimeters in width. Then I'll come back at, on the third quadrant and make another line about th uh, five millimeters wide as well. And over in the fourth quadrant, I'll make another line, again, about five millimeters in width. When I've made those lines, I will take a red pencil and I'll circle those. Those are what we call tripod marks, and they help us to orient them. Because we didn't move the surveying arm up or down while we made those three marks, it's critical that this arm is not moved up or down when you make those marks. Because it was at the same level, those three marks define a plane that is horizontal with the tabletop. And if we were to accidentally tilt our cast or take it off and then put it back on, all we would have to do is orient this again so that all of those three marks are at the same level. We should be able to line those up. These are a little bit high at the back, so we'll lift that up. When all of those three marks can be made so that they're at the same level, you're back to the same path that you, uh, of insertion that you picked initially. That's referred to as tripoding, and that allows us to reestablish our path of insertion with a cast. Here's a cast that demonstrates something else that's important about our path of insertion. Once we pick a path of insertion, we're actually going to eliminate some of the undercuts on some of our surfaces, usually the proximal surfaces, the mesial and distal, and oftentimes the lingual or the buccal surface as well. We prepare parallel sided 
areas on the teeth. Here's one here on the mesial of the molar. You can see there's not very much undercut left. Over here on the distal of the premolar, similarly we have a nice flat surface here. Those preparations are referred to as guiding planes. Normally we will place those on the proximal surfaces of abutments and in many cases we'll also place them on the lingual surfaces if we're going to have a bracing element or a rigid element contacting the tooth there. So on this case we've prepared that on both of the lingual surfaces of these molars. And in some cases where we have rigid portions of the class coming around the distal buccal corners or the proximal corners of the teeth, we will also prepare some guide planes there. Guiding planes provide a way to ensure that the partial denture has one path of insertion. It allows us to have rigid metal portions that help prevent the partial denture from being inserted in any other direction. In that way we can control where the undercuts are. Because remember, undercuts are relative to a path of insertion. If our guiding planes provide an area that, that ensures that the partial denture can only go up and down, inserted and removed along the same path of insertion, that means that our retentive undercuts will be where we want. The guiding planes also represent areas that are relatively parallel and will allow us to gain some frictional retention, which again will help keep the partial denture in place.